big circle, can you see? It's good, man. <laughs> uh, well, we've landed, and I'm just going to just get out of the way here so you can see Jips wandering around, and and I'm trying to pick bits of fluff out of my face. Um, so we drove up the Dempster last night, and the Dempster's sort of uh, sort of that way a bit, um, and also this way a bit. Uh, it's over yonder uh, as it goes down by those. Uh, and up the mountain that way is the Yukon uh, uh, further into the Yukon and then into the Northwest Territories and then uh, and carrying on up until you fall into the sea basically um, and uh, and this is the Arctic Circle Post and of course uh, that's the latitude and that's the point of the earth that is always either in the shade or uh, always in the sun basically um, draws a bit of a circle on the on the on the top of the earth as it tilts because there's a 23 degree axle access axle axle anyway um so there we are uh, land rovers made it without any drama uh it's minus 17 at the moment right here it's a bit burr uh and so i've got my best hoodie on and uh do you know what you're not going to believe this but i didn't bring my big jacket so i've, I've only got this little padded chap uh, from patagonia but um i'm non-cold because i'm you know from built of hardy stuff any road um what i've got to tell you is a very interesting story i was drone flying today to take some photographs of the arctic circle and i shut the back, I sat in the back with jip and i shut the back door I couldn't get out because there's no handle on the back door that's a thing isn't it uh i didn't think that was legal but anyway um they are so uh uh, no drama with the Land Rover. It's been it's been fairly chilly, as you probably as you as you can guess. Uh, the road is very rough. I'll just see if I I don't I don't know if you can see this, but uh, these rocks and stones and things like that. This this well this is this is a bit of a lay by, but the the road's just the same uh, if you drive the thing. And of course it's it's frozen. And it's got snow on it, not very much here, but up in the way it's got about six or eight inches on and as you can tell here it's uh, what they call boreal forest or the end of it uh, the boreal forest is uh, very low lying kind of shrubby chap things and um, i'm just going to show I've turn the camera around so you can see what i'm what i'm talking about i have to do that with my nose because <laughs> because i've got my gloves on um anyway yeah uh, this is this is it this is uh this a boreal sort of shrub forest uh, what's left of it of course it becomes tundra from uh, from here on in pretty much uh, and actually if you went back that way probably about i don't know about uh 10 to 20 miles uh, there's a distinct sort of line where the um, where the uh, the boreal forest ends and the and the the rest of it starts uh, but it is very pretty out here in its starkness and uh, i was reading while I stopped off at the Eagle Plains for a cup of coffee. Um, don't want to warm a cup of coffee up, any road. Uh, I, the, uh, I was reading there that there'd been, uh, between 1904 and 1921, the Northwest Mounted Police, uh, what is now the, y, the RCMP, I suppose, um, came from uh, over that way, up in Inuvik, and um, tuk 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 uh, and they drove the thousand miles with um, with dog sleds and whatever every once a winter and they made this trip all the way down there a thousand miles over this sort of stuff which is presumably covered in snow and ice uh, for the winter and um, they only lost one which is called the lost patrol and uh, uh, and they all perished having made a bad turn and running out of food and and coming back this way a bit of a sad ending really but anyway they repeated this in 1945 and it's not been done since uh, and you can see it's i mean as you can see it's pretty rough terrain here i can't imagine what it must be like doing this in winter time when there's i don't know 10 feet of snow or whatever it is you've got and coming through these mountains and making camp where it's cold especially when you've not got any of the fancy tools that we've got now anyway um this is basically it this is the arctic circle uh latitude 66 degrees 33 minutes north and uh there's a bit of an outpost here apparently there's a there's a chap that lives here 
I have shown you this. There, there he is. Look, there's a little marmot that lives underneath here, uh, and uh, there's a number of little holes, and um, he's often spotted. Uh, coming out by people that, that pop here. I haven't seen him, but probably I've been eating. It's very chilly, got. Um, anyway, he lives under here and he's been seen by many folks, and I thought that's kind of cute. Uh, there are a number of bits of wildlife here some marmoty things and some uh, hares and some other such things. Uh, it's caribou and whatever. I've seen a couple of caribou, and actually, I saw an ermine the other night. Um, and there's Jip. Look, Jip's not bothered about the weather, are you, lad? Fluffy. Come on in then. Let's have the inside where it's nice and warm. Up you go. I'm listening to Sam Diamond in here. Look, we've got half a boot and whatever. It's very sorted. Uh, got all the stuff laid out and, and it's very um, very comfortable. Slept in there. It's nice as toast. I didn't uh, I didn't keep the the engine running and I, I, I am wondering whether or not I should have done that really with it being uh, minus 17. I wasn't cold, but I did. Uh, I did wonder whether it would have been easier on the car. Anyway, uh, there you go. I haven't used the fuel yet. I fueled up at Eagle Plains this morning. Uh, but the fuel I did bring with me just in case. There's 60 litres there, 65 litres or so of fuel. And, uh, and technically speaking, I could come all the way up here and all the way back. Uh, to Dawson City without actually using fuel at Eagle Plains just in case it didn't it wasn't any good or it wasn't open or whatever um, but I'm anticipating now I'm going to try and head over there to the Northwest uh, Territories border and then just take a photograph and then jingle back I just sort of fancy going through those mountains now um, it's only about 11 o'clock in the afternoon and as you can see the Sun is over there it's very low in the sky and it hasn't really come up very much that's assisting the temperatures or lack thereof. Uh, right, there you are. Uh, that's my report of uh, the Arctic Circle. Probably the first defender, I think, the first defender, uh, the new, uh, new new defender, L663, probably the first to make it to the Arctic Circle. I shall endeavour to find out whether that fact is a fact. Uh, and uh, if not, that'll be, uh, well, that'll be me. That'll be, I suppose that'll be fun if I am. And if I'm not, well, I'm not. I've still made the trip. Well, here we are at the Northwest Territories. Now, I'm sorry about the wind, uh, but this is, uh, well, I'll try and see if we can't figure out how to do this, but uh, you'll probably see, you know, apart from it being very white, it's uh, it's incredibly sort of high. Um, about that way, he says, pointing, uh, some uh, hour is um, Eagle Plains. Uh, and basically what we have here, roughly speaking, is uh, nothing really. Um, it's a, a sort of a, an altitude uh, spot that marks the Northwest Territories border. And uh, beyond which, if I can get this to come down, is not a lot of anything. Right? Um, now this way, about four hours, is Tukti right on the, the Bering Sea and uh, the camera is struggling to focus because it's got nothing to focus on. Uh, it's all white out there um, and that is the Northwest Territories. Now I'm not going to go any further that way because I don't have a permit to travel. Uh, it is the season of, of Covid and, uh, and there is no such um, permit uh, permitted. I haven't applied for one um, for the Northwest Territories. circle and that's what I've done. Um, he says uh, what I have got here of course is uh, carried on a little bit further to the border um, and it's minus 27 here right now. Uh, it's a little chilly and uh, very strong winds so there's a, a big wind chill um, coming from uh, this direction. If I can bring the camera around this direction a very strong wind chill. Um, but the Land Rover is doing very well. Uh, what I can tell you is that this this road surface, um, which we'll just try and have a look at here, is uh, is dreadful. And I've tried to stop on it even with my wintery tyres, and uh, it's super slidey as you can see. Quite icy, quite slick, um, very slippery. And the Land Rover did okay. Um, didn't, uh, the tyres are letting it down. 
Um, you can see the ATs here. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. You can see the AT tires have sucked up snow and they're doing the best that they can. They've done very well on the gravel so far. Uh, and uh, really an all round great tire, I suppose, for this kind of thing. Uh, you just have to be a little bit more careful on the slick ice where it's glazed over here it's it's glazed come on Jim you'll be getting cold um, Jim's pretty good until minus 30 uh, afterwards he's uh, getting come on he gets a little chilly and we'll put him in the car to warm him up up you go lad up you go there you go dog in car say hi Jim yeah good so that's where we are. Um, I'm just going to turn the camera around. Up here you have uh, nothing. So I'm headed back now uh, to, to fill up at Eagle Plains and then the return journey home. Uh, pretty good trip all around, really.